Pop Spotlight, brought to you by Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harry from Bell Lost Souls Tabletop News with Evan from Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. And we're back with another Tabletop Spotlight. Yeah. Evan has brought something that I have been very, very interested in. Yes, for a long it's time. very exciting, especially for me. Um, this is the the Genesis Core Rulebook. Yes. yes. So Fantasy it's, Flight Games, yep. they've, they've released this, and it's kind of a build your own RPG. Yeah. It's playing off the same system that nice Star catch. Wars <laughs> uses. Nice. Uh, there's Star Wars RPG, of course. You yep. know, uh, you know, Force and Destiny and all that good stuff. Yeah. Edge um, Empire. This is kind of the same system, but it's it's blank. Meaning you can add in your own story, your yes. own universe, anything like that, uh, but you have a good system to go by. Yeah, it, it basically took the core rules of the Star Wars RPG system, uh, they removed all the Star wars E stuff yeah. from the game, and just kind of have a streamline, like, hey, this is how this RPG system works, and it's kind of blank, but it's intentionally left blank yeah. for you to put your own stories in here. It's a lot like Fate, uh, which yeah. is zone blank RPG yep. or anything like that. It so. works in any system. You could yeah. do you could do a medieval system oh, yeah. with high or low magic. You could do a sci-fi system with high or low technology. You yep. can do a post-apocalyptic game. You can do monsters. You can do a World War II game. You could. <laughs> I saw World War II. Over there. Uh, so yeah, it could be literally anything. Anything yeah. you want to do. This Genesis system opens the door up. Um, it uses the same kind of narrative dice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we can see here they have yep. their own proprietary dice yep, yep. Uh, that's involved, and they look exactly like the Star Wars ones, just different symbols on there. There's no force dice, though. There is no force dice. We just talked about that yeah, off yeah. camera. But yeah, uh, so it's its its own proprietary dice, but other than that, it's its a good narrative based RPG. Yeah. Uh, it's not a stat based RPG, but narrative based, but yeah. we'll, we'll go yeah, into There that. are stats, though, right? Like, oh, yeah, there are stats. And but it's, like not, it's not uh, it's, heavy. It's more focused on the story than it is yes. on, on the, the actual numbers. Yeah. We'll there are no numbers. <laughs> right. We'll flip through the book and show it off, and we'll talk a little bit about the rules mechanics. Yeah. Um, but again, I'm really excited about this one and really interested to see what FFG does with their Genesis system. Yeah. Uh, because they can literally take any of their IPs that they own. Which they own a lot. They own a lot. Yeah. And they could just make a supplement for that RPG yeah. that works with the Genesis system. For example, what I really hope they do is an Arkham Horror oh, one. No, Arkham Horror, yeah. 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 yeah That'd be so enough. good. Fair enough. All That'd right. be so awesome. Anyway, let's uh, hop in and take a look inside the Genesis Core Rulebook. Genesis time! Yes. Are you excited about this one? Yeah, I actually kind of like the cover art. Yeah, I, I, again, it's your own story. I really like this. Uh, I like the concepts of Genesis. Yep. I, I like the, uh, the choose your own setting. Yeah, this is a build your own RPG yeah. basically with a, its own rules so you have something to go by. It's the yeah. framework for your yeah. own RPG. It is the uh, it is the frame of the sandbox that you build yes. the sandbox in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so back to the, the book. I almost yeah. said box. Um, so it kind of has a quick description of it but also it has some uh, art from I think a few Twilight of, Imperium? Yeah, Twilight Imperium right here. FFG uh, owns IPs. Uh, but it's it's basically you can do anything really. You can have a steampunk adventure, a sci-fi yeah. adventure, or a firefighting adventure. You I know? think that's totally awesome. Yeah. Uh, by the way, these are the dice real fast. These are yeah. the proprietary. Which we'll, dice, we'll refer which we'll to again. Yeah, yeah, while we open the book. But. You, if you if you're gonna play Genesis uh, in the Genesis core system, you're gonna want to pick up some yeah. dice. And it, so. again, too, if these look familiar, that's because this is the same system that uh, Star Wars uses, the FFG Star Wars RPG system. Yeah. Uh, so they, they're basically the same dice, just different. Right. different uh, symbols on cool. them. So let me move these out of the way. Yes. Let's dive into the book. All right. Uh, high, real high level, Evan. Uh, what do you think we should cover, talk about in this real quick? I like to talk about how the dice work, because that's okay. the biggest difference for most RPGs. It's a zone proprietary yep. dice. Uh, let's go over this real quick. Uh, contents. Uh, so I like to talk about a lot of the core mechanics. We don't have to like, yeah. we don't have to go into nitty gritty. Uh, but I'd like to see how the creating characters are different from the Star Wars one. I'd like to see, uh, you know, kind of equipment. We'll talk a little bit about how skills work, because that's yeah. that goes back to how it feeds into the dice pool. Exactly, and equipment's interesting too, because they're not going to have equipment for you to choose from, because it's not it's not its own RPG. Yeah. Uh, but it'll talk about how you can rarify equipment, like in Star Wars RPG, a lightsaber is super rare, you know, so like yeah, that. Yeah. It has its own rarity system. Uh, but we have a combat encounters we can talk about. Uh, social, social encounters, encounters is a big deal. Which is a huge deal for this uh, system. This is a very social game. A um, little less on the combat end. Yeah. Talking about the game master, but then we have the part the two big is thing setting. Is, is like again, these are these are just generic settings that you can start yeah, from. I'd really like to go over this. This yeah. is how we talk about uh, how you choose your own setting. And then last but not least, the game master's toolkit, which we'll get into adventure building and stuff like that. So uh, we're gonna go pretty quick. We're obviously not gonna go page by page. Yeah. But we're gonna cover some of the big highlights. So um, yeah. Quick introduction, but I'm gonna keep going. So let's talk about the rules. Now this is a very narrative rule-based system. Okay. D&D, &D, uh, 
you know, especially fourth edition D&D, it's very stat based, yeah. which is great. A lot of people love stat based, but this is this is for people who kind of are more, not necessarily more into the story, but more into just uh, progressing socially. Yeah. That makes sense. So it talks about narrative play, how that kind of works. Yeah, yeah. But let's talk about the dice. The yes. dice are interesting. Now, uh, here they are again. Each die has a different use and this system, you build pools of dice. You're not okay. rolling, you can roll one die. But usually you're building a few, a few dice a check in the pool. Is have multiple yeah, tools. exactly. Now they have positive dice and negative dice. Here are right. the positive dice. We have the boost dice, the ability dice, and the proficiency dice. Now ability dice are your main ones. Let's say you're trying to hack into a system. Or... This is a, well, let's, let's keep using this example because it's going to come up a lot. So okay. Yeah. Here's a situation. Yeah, you're trying you're to a hacker hack... and you're trying to hack into a terminal, computer, pick a lock, whatever you want to call it. Right. And there's a firefight going on. All right. So there's a firefight going on. Now uh, you. Probably the DM's gonna be like, okay, you've done this before. You're, you know about You're hacking. You're competent about. I'm gonna say you take two ability dice and a proficiency die. Sounds All good. Right. So, because yeah, you're proficient. Ability dice would be based, be probably based off of a stat or a skill. Yeah, stat right. definitely, uh, and then proficiency because you're, you're really well known into it. Now, yeah. let's say you weren't in a firefight and you were just like, uh, you were under the cover of darkness. There's no, like, there's no yeah. way anyone can catch you. You might also get a boost dice because yeah, you're, you you're in a time. situation where you have the advantage. Right. However, you are in a firefight in our situation. So we're gonna let's go to the negative dice. Right. Since you're in a firefight, you're gonna probably get a setback die. Now this is just gonna kind of take this either gonna count counteract uh, something or even if you succeed in your check you might also get a negative uh, boost for yeah. it. so let's talk about the scenario again let's say you roll your dice and you succeed okay. however you rolled let's see where was it uh, let's say you rolled it's on here somewhere you've got because you've got these different right, symbols take, that, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, Go there's back. different ratios of the symbols on each one of the dice yeah even the even the negative dice May have a beneficial boost, but it, it, it's. You let's say you roll a symbol. I can't. Remember, I can't find where it's called right now. But let's say you roll a symbol that uh, gives you a, a negative. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry. Uh, six, uh, success advantage and triumph failure uh, and threat. Let's say you rolled a threat. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Let's say you succeed. So you ro rolled enough successes and uh, the failures didn't yeah. counter out the successes. Just to, just to back up real yeah. quick too. You've got on on the different dice. You've I'm got sorry, successes, yeah. advantages. Yep. You've got triumph. You've got failures and threats. Yes. And so, then also despair. So And these kind of all counteract each other. Yeah, exactly. We'll Successes and failures counteract. Threats and uh, go back real quick. Threats. These are new words for me. It's threats and advantages uh, and counteract. And then triumphs and despair I counteract. Counter. So let's, let's say you got enough successes to hack the system. However, you rolled a threat and it wasn't counteracted. Right. So let's say you broke in, you were able to hack this terminal, but an alarm set off. Yeah, uh, and that's just an, this is just an example. You set off an alarm, and more bad guys started coming. Yeah. So you succeeded, but something bad happened. Or maybe you got shot. Or maybe you got shot. That's even better. Yeah. Yeah, because this is a firefight. But it could be the opposite too. It could be something like uh, you you failed to hack the system. However, in that failure, you accidentally closed a door that kind of cut off the enemies from right. it. Right. Maybe you rolled a triumph, and something good happened. Exactly. Yeah. So there there's a lot of things that could happen. Now again, it's kind of up to your DM what yeah. happens. Uh, they can't decide whether or not it fails because the dice decide for that. But yeah. if something bad happens, they can decide something. So like in a that. weird way, the game does have the binary states of pass fail. Yes, it but does. But on top of that, it has those narrative advantages, disadvantages, yeah. triumphs, and, and despairs that are going to uh, uh, give you different gradients of successes and failures, which yeah. is really cool. I really like that. And idea this is something you talked about earlier, uh, or, or you at least told me you can succeed going backwards and fail going forward. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a concept uh, um, that uh, JR RP. Yeah. Writing a lot about, but failing forward, yeah, and then also succeeding backwards, yeah. So, um, like you said, you might pick the lock, but you might have gotten shot, or maybe you set off an alarm. That's the idea of failing, uh, of succeeding backwards. Um, failing forwards is maybe you didn't pick the lock, but something else happened that was good, and that was in its own way as a success. So, I love that concept. I try to use that even in more traditional RPG type sure, games. Sure, yeah, for sure. But this game really forces your game master, your DM, to really embrace that concept and run with it, which is super cool. Yeah, it's really it's one cool. of the things that I'm most excited about for the system. All right, so that's the basic principle of the dice. So yeah, there they are. And that's the core mechanic. That's gonna you're gonna you're gonna be using that throughout the entire time you're playing. Yeah, Anytime that's, you're rolling this is the dice. biggest difference from other RPGs, really. Yeah. Is that it, and usually that's the the thing. Like besides Pathfinder and D and D, who have the same D twenty yeah. system. Instead of adding modifiers, yeah, you're adding you're building a dice pool. And yeah. speaking of building a dice pool, 
how, how does a basic die pool work? Like, well, that, that's the thing. So uh, each character does have stats, and you're going to say you have stats and hacking. It, again, it's based off the game you design. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's say you're in a sci-fi setting, and your character has a good stat on hacking. That stat will determine how many uh, regular success dice, uh, or uh, sorry, regular of these ab uh, ability uh, dice, dice are going to yeah. go. The DM is the one who gets to throw in either boost die or uh, uh, setback dice based off of the situation, but you can also get challenge dice and How would you, how would you, if you're the DM, how would you toss in proficiency dice or, or challenge dice? What would an example? Proficiency dice, I would, I would toss it in because let's say you build a system where, or not build a system, but you have a, a system where you can be proficient. Like in D&D, &D, how you, you're proficient, yeah. you get bonuses. You're, You've hacked so many computers, you yeah. know the code, you're You can throw it up a, a, a proficiency die as well. What if, uh, uh, what, what would be a good example of a, of a, a despair, despair die? dice? That's something like, or challenge dice. Challenge dice, challenge dice if you're in a situation that you're just not not good with uh, or let's say it's a high pressure situation high pressure situation uh let's say you're trying to you're in combat let's say for instance and yeah. you're fighting uh someone you're fighting someone with a knife and they have a gun you know yeah, yeah. you're not in a good situation yeah. you know and uh, the difficulty would that be represented by like if you you're a really good computer hacker but this uh this has got some serious yeah. Difficulty is not based or, off of you as a character, it's based off of what you're trying to do. Okay. So, exactly, like, if you're trying to scale a... The security in the system is so good. A 30 wall good. is hard, you know, yeah. harder to scale than a 10-foot wall. So it's going to be, like, 30 walls is going to have two dice, and the 10-foot wall is going to have one Makes dice. sense. Exactly. Yeah. So that's based off of what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. So, so. you really have to trust your GM, and, and yeah. uh, the DM's got to be able to, to be very fluid and improv improvisational yeah. coming up with these dice challenges. And, you, uh, can, you can write that down. I mean, you can oh, yeah. pre-plan, but you can't... There's, there's going to be an element of on the fly. Another thing I like about the system too is this is they, they tell you what you can use these for, but you can you can kind of make up your own thing. That's, yeah, yeah. And even if you do make up your own thing, it won't it'll still translate well in the rest of the system. Yeah. So very that's cool. That's the kind of advantage. So of those. dice pool. Yes. That was what. That's how you ba kind of building build a dice pool. pool yeah, uh, it's very simple how to do. I'm just going to kind of quickly go this character uh, ratings, uh, character building. You're going to have stats like we mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, things like agility and brawn and intellect presence and willpower. Those all translate into strength, dexterity, things yeah, like that, um, yeah. charisma. If Very familiar for someone who yeah. plays Pathfinder or D&D. Yeah. Uh, so we're going through... And here's a bunch of examples about tests that Evan yeah. just talked about, like the difficulty and things like that. So and they, there's lots of charts that will help you out. Yes, there definitely are. And then building a basic dice pool. I should also point out too, FG has their own app. Uh, for yeah. their dice. I forgot to mention that. So they have their own app, so you don't have to necessarily buy this pack. You can buy the app if, you, if you're if you into electronic. I'm personally into more of the physical dice. I like dice. The physical dice too. I'll buy three of these packs because you're building pools, but uh, yeah, yeah. But you, you can also They're get more the fun app. to roll for me personally. Oh, I love it, yeah. But there is an app and it's good and you can use it for their Armada, X-Wing, all that good stuff. Yeah. Alright, sorry. So we already talked about building a dice pool, so let's kind of skip over this. Interpreting pool? That's a big deal. Yeah. For your Like for your I said, master. Success and failure is determined by the dice, but the rest is determined by the DM. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really helpful if you have a DM that's really good into improvising, uh, or just, you know, who's really good at kind of interpreting what the and dice storytelling. And, and storytelling. This, yeah. this is what I call the narrative dice system, yeah. because you really have to buy into the narrative, and you have to really go for it when you're the DM. It, I think it puts a lot more work on the DM personally, Yes. which maybe not is a, isn't a terrible thing, it's just... Um, it's just one of the things about the system. In my opinion, too, I you know I love DD. I want to preface that, but uh, it, it sometimes when I'm DMing, I feel like I, do, I don't get to play enough. If that makes yeah, sense, yeah, this yeah. kind of lets, lets the DM play around a little bit. Yeah, uh, you really have to. It's a weird opinion, pictures. I know, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right, keep going. I'm sorry. So let's just kind of skip around. So creating characters, I want to see this too. Uh, see if it's different from Star Wars. Uh, so like you said earlier, you're gonna have those basic stats that mm -hmm. kind of translate over to strength and whatnot. Um, it's going to have some background stuff, so you can you can kind of build your own yep. for that as well. Archetypes and species. It's going to give you examples of yeah. how to do that, uh, all the way from like your basic humans to on on down the line to like if you want to do a dwarf or something like that. So it's going to show you how to do that. Yeah. Um, those are just arch. But again, this is a build your own RPG yeah. type system, so. You're going to start with these archetypes. You're going to figure out what works best for your setting and your game that mm -hmm. you want to do. They have the generic names too, like the laborer and stuff like that. That yeah, could yeah. be like the soldier and stuff like that. Um, and then I'll have the basic stats. Of yeah. course, you can change those if you want. But these, these are like very well tested and mm -hmm. kind of like mm -hmm. basic stats. So, uh, And so the, the generic archetypes that you can transform into anything else. Yep. Uh, choosing a career, uh, that's basically your, your class if you're yeah. playing D&D. &D. Um, so there is a generic type, healer, leader, 
so like let's say we're playing a World War II game, which is something I really want to do. A healer will be the medic, and the leader will be like your your captain, captain. Your captain. Lieutenant. Yeah, exactly. And the soldier will probably be the private. That's yeah. Just How around. I'd make the uh, scoundrel the sniper and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So stuff Absolutely. like that. Um, you can you can translate however you want to do it. There's a ton of there's a ton of examples. Yeah, in here. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip we're gonna go through that. Uh, how did it invest experience points? Now, yep. a lot of DMs will kind of choose how you. T a lot of DMs will either say, "Hey, uh, we're gonna do it like the basic way. If you mm -hmm. kill this enemy, you get this many XP points. You know, divide it up." Or some DMs will be like, "Okay, at the end of this scenario, we'll, we'll level up and stuff like that." Yeah, there's the milestone system. Yeah. There's the XP system. It's exactly the same in this one. You can kind of choose what you want. Yeah. When you're building your own creatures, uh, you can choose kind of like how much experience points to yeah. give them and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, keep going. Sorry, determine character motivation. But that's uh, we'll, we'll stop there because the character yeah. creation is very. It's fluid. There's charts to help out with that. Sure. Uh, we've talked about the dice pool stuff. Um, do you want to touch on the skills? Skills real fast, because that's gonna apply to like combat mechanics and things like yeah, that. Yeah. Where are they? they are right. Ooh, we are almost there. Skills. Yeah. So look at this chart right here. Complete skill list. Um, and there are again generic things. So like charm or athletics and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. You'll have page numbers. So this is actually a really nice chart. Yeah. Uh, and then it'll have even the setting. So alchemy. And then it's recommended for a fantasy, steampunk, and weird war setting. Yeah. That's really if cool. If you want to do like a weird, a weird World War II setting, <laughs> or like a World War One setting, that's yeah, weird. yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, like a Lovecraftian World War. Oh, oh man, yeah. I'm just coming up with ideas now. Uh, but no, yeah, so that's really like cool too. Like an Arkham Horror RPG, huh? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you can put this in, or you can take it out, and they have even recommendations for it. So even like brawl is all settings, or uh, let's see, down. I'm sure they have something for sci-fi only. Uh, or divine using any setting from with magic rules. Uh, computers. Yeah. There you go. Ma modern day science fiction and space opera. Yeah, <laughs> space opera. Uh, but so you kind of do whatever you want. Skills are kind of the same throughout, like uh, through D and D uh, and yeah. Pathfinder and stuff like that. We can kind of gloss over these real quick. You have the gen generic skills and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna keep going. There's also social skills, which we're about to get to. Yeah. Knowledge skills and uh, combat skills and social skills are coming up. So too. talk to me about combat real quick. It's it's the same basic stuff, right? You're gonna take your combat skill. You're gonna take your probably your it's, strength stat if you're fighting yeah. like close combat, or maybe you have a weapon. You're gonna build a dice pool. Yes. And you're gonna roll, see what happens, right? Exactly. It's it's still the dice pooling. The the nice thing about these is you're always building dice pools. It's not yeah. it's not like a different way of rolling uh, when you're in combat or when you're doing a social tech or knowledge yeah. tech. It's the same kind of thing. Uh, it's just built differently. Yeah. Uh, in in this in at least if it's not different from Star Wars, I mean, if you're fighting in combat, the the the, the purple dice are going to be the skill of the opponent you're going. The against. difficulty. Yeah. Attack. It, it difficulty. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so or maybe it's their different. armor, or what, whatever yeah. your GM or GM. Uh, uh, Another difference of this out. game is too, uh, at least uh, like at Star Wars, is you know how in D and D like each square is uh, five feet or something sure, like that. Sure. This one is, is it's based off of close range, medium range, long range, or really long range, and it's yeah. up to the DM to determine what that is. Yeah. Uh, so combat range and all that stuff. So the DM could be like, if you're playing with the map, your DM can be like, this area right here is close range, and then. So on yeah. and so forth. You can play with the map. But you don't have to. You don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's also said. Uh, talents. Now, talents are great too. We have a whole bunch of talents, uh, but they're they're basically like skills you can have, like in D and D. Yeah, um, they're gonna add or subtract dice yeah. based on whatever. Feats. I mean, feats. sorry. Feats. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, kind of going through that. People know about feats and yeah. talents. So, equipment. Now, this is something interesting. So, uh, let's kind of talk about the rarity system. Yeah. Talk about it down here. Uh, you can actually. <sighs> One thing like you know, have, have you played Borderlands? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know this, you have that you kind of open a chest and it's a random thing that comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. You can actually do that in, in this. Common, uncommon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can roll dice. Rare. You can build a dice pool. You can say the DM's like, okay, you're gonna open this chest and you're gonna roll this dice pool, and based off of what you get, you can get an item from a rarity tier. So okay. the DM's like, oh wow, you found something that was hard to find, and then he can look down the list of hard to find things that he could build himself with this system and choose something from that yeah. list. Yeah, yeah. So it, it kind of helps, with, you, you, you can just say, hey, whatever, it's, this is what's in the chest, but it also is nice, flavorful for the DM. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of keep things fresh Again, for him as well. narrative dice him pool, narrative system, that's, yeah. that's what it's all about. With so the that's cool, there's uh, kind of a rarity to it. Uh, Encumbrance talks about that as well. Yeah, we can kind of keep skipping ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, let's go ahead over to um, weapons and armor, all that stuff. It's in here. Combat, Combat encounters? encounters? We kind of talked about yeah. that already. We don't need to get in there too, too much. Keep um, on going. Oh, man, there's a lot to this book. <laughs> I'm just gonna... Chapter 7. Social encounters. 
Uh, we kind of talked about those yeah. a little bit. That's again, you can you can do it without the dice if you really want to, but there are rules in there to roll dice uh, um, if somebody's trying to use their charm and they're just not conveying it very well yeah, with their role sure. play. You can you can use the dice. It's okay. So here they have the settings that they they kind of like recommend that you could do. Yeah. So they have fantasy, steampunk, weird war, modern day science fiction, and space opera. Obviously, you can do whatever you want. Heck yeah. Um, this is cool too. This uh, is a generic character sheet. It's all blanks. Well, it's a generic sh sheet for the setting. So yeah. World base setting, exactly. uh, tone, overview. So uh, and down here, permission granted to photocopy this. So you can photocopy this. This is oh, this isn't a character. This is actually the yes, setting. Yes, this sheet. is a setting sheet. Yeah. Okay, this is for the DM to fill out then. Yeah. So you can also put down the skills that you can find or that you can have in the setting. Uh, technology levels. What I, what I really like about this too is it has things like who are the major personalities in the setting, what are the major factions. So like this is something the DM can fill out, give to the players, yeah, so exactly. they know the setting they're getting into. Which, which is, is super really cool. cool. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm gonna steal that for other games. Just as like that's actually a really good idea. There's like a primer. Like, copy this yeah. The front of the game. Here's who the big players are in your game. You need to be the aware. Big of factions. Them. The big know. factions. The big NPCs. You've yeah. Definitely heard of these people before. Fantasy setting. Yeah. And again, goes over tropes is really cool. Uh, but it also talks about how there could be magic. Questing. The oh, the MacGuffins. Gotta have a MacGuffin, dude. Yeah, sure. I, I ate one of those the other day. <laughs> That was bad. Uh, keep going. But also it has kind of like uh, new starting character options. So options that you can actually add in, like doors. And yeah, because the early we saw humans. And yeah. These are your basic doors. I'm just going to skip over to the next one. We have Steampunk, which is really cool. Who doesn't want to Trump, Trump's. Uh, Trump's. Tropes. Uh, sorry. Very different. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, example of overview of that. But also then you have the, your starting character options. The mongrel or the revenant. You know, yeah. stuff like that. But also weapons all that cool. you can add in. So a spring fist. Hey man. Uh, so oh, I thought those were used after um, summer or uh, after fall. <laughs> after fall. That was also bad. Before uh, summer. <laughs> uh, adversaries that you can find in Steampunk. Then we have the Weird War. war. Which is super cool. I want to do this one. Like a World War One Weird War. There's some miniature you can get. Except the Weird War Nazis. I'd like to kill some Nazis. Who wouldn't? Uh, keep going. But like, you know, they even have some artwork for it. Specific gear, stuff like that, adversaries. Oh my god, there's so much in here. Modern day, which is their firefighting Let's one. Let's go ahead and skip around. You get the idea. Science fiction. Oh, I'm sorry. We're, We're just going to go. Keep going. Going on. Space opera. Going on. Twilight Imperium. All right. 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 Twilight Imperium yeah. again. Twilight Imperium. <laughs> totally, totally use Twilight Imperium. Why not? They own it. IP. You could play a spaceship game with Twilight Imperium's miniatures. I'm just saying. Keep going. Oh my god. Blue Evans. No, we have to stop and do that right now. Uh, game Master <laughs> Toolkit. Now we can talk about this. Now, customizing rules. Again, uh, it's it's a game where you can kind of mix and match the rules if you want. If you don't like a rule, you can take it out if you want. It's, it's up to you. I mean, absolutely. You yeah. are the Game Master. You're the DM. This is your game. You're going to be using the core rules to establish your setting and your game. And this is what this whole section is all about. Yeah, and it'll help you create species or archetypes, stuff like that, or items. Keep going. Yeah, you get the uh, you idea. Tell me to go faster. Alternate rules, which we just literally went over. Yeah, uh, nemesis, can... extra rules. A good game always has a good villain. A good nemesis system. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, man. I, I agree. Uh, yeah. Sorry, we're almost to the end. Yeah. Uh, but this is going to go over. This is all the Vehicle toolkit. Vehicle rules, yeah, magic tool rules. Kits. We, we, you, you get the idea. You can pick this book up and read yeah, it. Uh, absolutely. I just want to real quick just go over... Pulp themes. That's awesome. Uh, here's the index in the end. Wait. Wait for here. it. Wait for it. Romanticness. Oh, ooh, ooh, hello. That? I think these pages are stuck together. No, it's literally just one page. Uh, here's the index. Okay. A lot to it, but then here is, is the generic character yes. sheet that you can you can photocopy. Yep. I'm sure you can find it online already, uh, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. definitely you can use this. But it it's customizable, everything you need. Uh, only two pages. Oh wait, only three pages. So yeah, this is your talent pyramid. If you're not familiar with the RP, uh, their Star Wars RPG system, yeah, it's a similar idea. You have your class; they have uh, different talents that you can unlock and yeah. kind of build out your character from that way. Yeah. So. so it's very wow. cool stuff. Lots to talk about. Genesis system. We've been super excited about this. We've been waiting for this one to come out here. At yeah, I'm excited. I know JR is looking forward to uh, getting in and talking about the system. I'm excited about learning more about it. I'm going to make a World War One Weird War. He's going to do it. Let's hop out <laughs> for a really fast recap. Well, everyone, that was the Genesis core rulebook and the dice. Obviously, we didn't open the dice, but you saw them. Yeah, what'd you uh, think? Okay, so before we get into that, let's do the numbers crush. Okay, let's fast, do that just first. Just because I, I want to talk about that. All right. Uh, what's the price point of the book? Thirty nine ninety nine. Ninety five. Thirty nine ninety five. And the dice, four cents. The dice were uh, fourteen ninety five. Yes, fourteen ninety five. Uh, again, it is an RPG system, so playtime and number of players variable. variable. It's up to up to you and your group. Yeah. Now, 
What did I think about the system? Yes. Did you ask me that? We have very different opinions on the system. Yeah, I I am not a huge fan of the narrative dice system, okay. but but it's because uh, of the group that I play with. Yeah. I don't know if they would like the narrative dice dri driven thing. They're they're more, uh, we like to call it, they're more crunchy. Like okay, they yeah, want yeah. they want the stats. They the want numbers. the stats. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as, as we talked about in the opening, it's not a stat based yeah. book or an RPG system. Right, right, it's right, very right. narrative based. Now again, yeah. I like narrative stuff too. No. Yeah. I yeah. would be down to give this a try. Um, absolutely. I think it's I think it's got some merit. I really like the the concepts and the the stuff that we went over like yeah. the, the the idea of the dice pool and how you can fail forward or succeed backwards mm -hmm. which we talked about a, a little bit yeah but that's so cool for narrative stuff i really do believe that this system has got some some room to grow and some some direction i just think it really depends on your group and the type of player you are if you really like stats and you like binary pass fail systems and you want like I want to hit a target number. Yeah. I want to add these modifiers, and I want to hit that number, and I want to do damage, and I want to play that game, and I want to move five feet and do a power attack. If that's the type of game you're looking for, they already have those games are out there. Yeah, you've played them. I know you have. <laughs> but that's where we disagree, and like, yeah, I, I am very involved in. The I don't narrative. think we disagree. I think we come at it from different. We agree, but we we have different opinions on it. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. That's what yeah. we're going at. But I, and I do admit that the dice get some takes some getting used to. Yeah. But after you do get used to them, it's yeah. very fluid, and yeah. I, I prefer a dice building yeah, or a yeah. pool building uh, scenario, but. It, I mean, because you you know how the dice work. You've played. You've yeah, played I, I've played yeah. Star Wars extensively, and yeah. it's the same exact dice, really. Yeah. Uh, and after a while, maybe it took me like three games to get yeah. used to the dice, and I was DMing even. Uh, but after you do get used to it, it's kind of fun just building your own pool, adding in a few like flavored dice yeah. if you want to. Absolutely, yeah. I, I agree with Evan 100 percent in that case. Yeah. I think once you get used to the dice, what, once the DM is comfortable in the system, I think it's a bigger thing too. This does require kind of a good DM. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. D and D doesn't need it to, especially if you're playing off a, uh, yeah. a, a scenario. If you're playing like a, a pre pre generated, pre -generated yeah, uh, uh, the DM really yeah. doesn't need to be that great. Uh, it's preferable if they're great. Yeah. But this one because you, you can follow the follow you know, yeah follow the numbers. This uh, one you do kind of need a DM who's good at improvising. Improv. Yeah. yeah, yeah if you yeah, can improv on the fly. But other than that, it, yeah. I love it I because love be, because of the way the dice work. Again, we covered some of this, but. Uh, the, because of the way the dice work, how you're reading the, the dice and how they interpret those yeah. uh, is really determined with your DM, and that's going to affect a lot of things. But it does set up some really cool stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, absolutely. Like, we've talked about, like, you know, say you're trying to hack a computer. This one always comes up. Yes. You're trying to hack a computer, but you're getting shot at. Right. So getting shot at is going to add the, 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 the disadvantage. The disadvantage dice. But, um, but you're really good at hacking, really hacking, so you get two advantage dice. Right. Yeah. You're going to roll those, and you may not pass the check to hack, but maybe you just found cover and didn't get shot. So yeah, there's like there's some good things that can happen yeah. even if you do fail. That's what you're yeah. talking about. You can succeed the, the going fail backward, forward and fail forward. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's such a cool, it's such a cool concept. Yes. I really do like that stuff. I mean, I'm I'm we talked about this for a while. Yeah, let's, let's try it out then. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> you give it a shot too. Tell us what you think. Again, Genesis, the core rulebook out from FFG right now. Yeah. I do recommend it, even though it's not personally your type. It's not personally my thing. Maybe I, I can convince you. Maybe I'll, you I'll DM you. a game for you, and maybe you I can try game. to convince you. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm, right. I'm game. All like right. I said, I'm, I'm glad you're game. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm Adam Harry from Bulls. I'm Evan from Dragon's Lair Comics of Fantasy. And this has been another Tabletop Spotlight. Thanks again for watching. Tabletop Spotlight brought to you by Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. Thanks for watching.